what's going on guys welcome back to the channel hope you guys are all having a fantastic day out there in the very last video I kind of went over why exactly do we use optionals inside of our programs but I didn't exactly go over how to best deal with the values inside of our sort of optional boxes so in today's video I would like to go over three of the best ways to deal with optionals and the first way is to obviously use the force unwrapping exclamation mark also known as a bang operator to kind of access the values inside of our optionals but it's not always a good idea and most of the time it'll lead to a crash inside of your program so we're going to go over force unwrapping first and then i'll show you guys how it crashes when it tries to access a nil value and then we will use the optional binding syntax of if let to make sure our program does not crash and then finally, if we have some extra time at the very end, I'll go over using the more preferred uh, style of guard let optional binding that helps us avoid the pyramid of if let brace statements uh, inside of our programs. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at playgrounds right here and see what we have inside of our live view. So I have kind of a starter project up and ready that renders this little bit of an app on the right side. And how does this work? Well, inside of Playgrounds, you can set the Playground current live view to some kind of controller. And I basically have a navigation controller with this bar up here. And my view controller is this view controller right here. And we see the red label, the blue label, and then this winner label that says who won. So basically, I want to figure out who is winning based on what these values are. For example, with the five and the four, uh, the winner here should be the five. So this right here should say red has one. But if I click on roll dices, you see that it's still trying to figure out who is winning. And basically this function is being called right here on line 76, printing out the label of figuring out who won right there. All right, so the task is, how exactly do we figure out who is winning based on the text inside of these boxes, right? So let's say, for example, if we're two and two, this should say perhaps a tie. And if it's three and six, it should say blue has won. So let's go into evaluate winner and add some extra bit of code to see how we can compare the text inside of those two UI label boxes, All right? So let's say it's five and four, right? The way I want to do this is to simply compare the text labels text. So let's say if, let's see, red label, that's the red label right here. And inside of it, we have this text value. So if you try to compare it uh, with the blue label, let's see, blue label dot text, you can perhaps say winner label dot text equals red has one because if the red label's text is greater than the blue label obviously the blue uh, player has lost and the red player has won otherwise you can just say winner label dot text equals blue one like so all right now you see at the very bottom right here it says that cannot convert value of string optional to type ui content size category so basically it's telling us that you can't compare this text right here which is an optional and the text right here, which is also an optional. So what you do is you just simply force unwrap it with the bang operator or the exclamation mark. So that gives you something that kind of uh, gives you the correct winner on the bottom label. So let me try to get a tie here with uh, two numbers that will match. And you see three and three, and right here it says blue has one, which is not correct, right? So three and three. And what you need to do is to, at the very first uh, if statement check, you should just check if the red label dot text, if this is equal to blue label dot text, like so. Right here, you should say winner label dot text equals tie, like that. And you should go to the very beginning here and just add the else if to catch the next statement. Okay. So with that being written out, you can roll the dice again, and it'll say tie when these numbers match. So that's how it works. Blue has one with one and six, six and one with a red as a winner. Okay, so pretty good stuff. And let me show you guys what the problem is with trying to force unwrap using this exclamation mark. And basically, 
I have this function that says handle roll dices that gives me a random number for the red and the blue box. And let's say somewhere up here, right? Let's say I say red label dot text is equal to nil. Okay, so basically the red box is going to have nothing inside of it after I roll the dice. And the moment I click that, you see that it says fatal error unexpectedly found a nil while unwrapping an optional value. So what does that really mean? Well, when it's trying to unwrap the red label dot text on line 82 right here, because it's nil, red label dot text, and you try to unwrap it, it'll crash your application, which leads to a blank screen like that. So that's a problem, and how do we avoid this issue? Well, in order to avoid it, you can use something called optional binding, and there's a couple of ways of doing this, so let's use the if let syntax first. So I'm going to say, uh, comment some of this stuff out. And let's say if let red text uh, equal to red label dot text, like that you have access to the red text in a non-optional variable right here. So you can go down here and do another if let blue text equals blue label dot text like so. Inside of this little if statement, you now have access to red text and blue text as non-optional strings, which means you can just simply say if, let's see, your red text is equal equal to blue text this is a tie, so winner label dot text equals tie. And then right here you can say else if red text is greater than blue text, you can say winner label dot text equal to red one. And then finally just say, let's see, paste that in there and say blue one at the very end. All right, so that is how that works. And let's see if I roll the dice again. I should be able to get exactly what I had before with trying to figure out who won. And because the red is empty due to that nil statement right there, we don't really see much uh, in the winner label at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and try to roll the dice again and you see uh, the correct print statement inside of the bottom label. Okay, so let's see what else can we do inside of our program to improve the syntax that we're typing out here. And basically, um, because we are getting into a little bit of a dangerous territory here with all these braces, you see we have three levels of braces up to here. Uh, typically, it becomes really difficult to manage code like this if you have too many if statements and a lot of branching. So what you can do is you can pull this up to the top. So let me just cut this and paste that in there. Remove that and perhaps that. Get the spacing back to the correct bit of tabbing and spacing. And this is a little bit better uh, in terms of the pyramid of braces. But the problem is that you can actually make this even better by using something called a guard let optional binding syntax. So let's say we do that up here instead with guard let red text equals the same exact thing as the if let statement, but you just say else return. So you just type in another uh, guard let statement with blue label, let's see blue label dot text right there. Otherwise you return. And you can take all of this code here now, and I'm just going to paste that there and comment this stuff out on the very bottom. And basically we have the exact same logic as we did before, or the logic isn't exactly the same, but we can roll the dice and we still get the tie, and we get the red winning, and we get the blue winning, just like that. All right, so the advantage of using the guard let syntax is to avoid the unnecessary pyramid of braces that gets a little difficult to read after a while. So the next kind of a question that we have here is what happens if we are trying to figure out whether or not these labels even have a valid a number in it. So for example if I go back up to handle roll dices and whenever I'm generating these random numbers let's say I set let's see blue dot 
uh, blue label dot text equal to nil and uh, take the red label and put that to nil as well every time I roll these dices you see that it's still trying to figure out who is winning with this line right here but the actual uh, error handling or the the statement that we want to print out here is something a little bit more useful and the way to do that is to go inside of this return right here so let's hit it enter enter and let's see get the spacing correct inside of here you can say winner label dot text is something like perhaps uh, red value invalid and let's see what happens when we hit the roll dice and try to evaluate the winner so roll dice you see the red value is invalid and you can do the same thing with the blue text which is down here let me get the spacing correct copy that guy paste that in there and say blue value invalid and then I'll let's see remove that and try to re-render this guy out so the thing about the live view is that every time you type in some new code it just automatically uh, runs it for you which is a little bit faster than the assimilator so let's roll that you see a blue value is invalid all right so good stuff now finally <laughs> the last bit of cleanup work that I want to kind of show you guys today is to make this little block here a little bit easier for us to read by combining these two let statements so let me just comment that out right there and I just was I just want to use one guard statement so guard let red text equals red label dot text and then use a second statement with let blue text equals blue label dot text else right here you can return and then you just simply say winner label dot text is uh, values are invalid dot 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 and then if I try to roll the dice you see blue is invalid and then if red is invalid uh, you'll still see the same statement and this way it's a little easier to kind of make sure your code is handling all of the errors in one statement like so so if I were to kind of comment this stuff you can kind of think of these guard statements uh, in this way so basically here is a kind of a check for all valid values and then inside of here is where you uh, prompt error when values are invalid and then down here is uh, values are all good to go perform the next bit of logic and that's kind of how you would handle optional values inside of your program. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys got a better idea as to how to best deal with optional values in your program so it doesn't crash whenever you encounter a nil value. All right, if you guys want to download the source code for today's playground, make sure to find that link down in the description below. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye guys.